Did you know that you can flatten brains in Laney? Today I am going to talk about how to flatten cortical chunks in Laney. Here in this animation on the left side you can see that from a folded cortical chunk of brain tissue we are transitioning into a flat pancake like format. To do this flattening operation we need to know a few concepts. So here let's have a look at this figure. In panel C we are seeing a folded cortical chunk around Heschel's gyrus and on the panel D we are seeing it in the flat format as I have shown in the animation in the previous section. To make this mapping or this transformation we need to know a few things beforehand. In the previous videos I have showed you how to compute the cortical depth, the D coordinate using LN2 layers. Maybe most of the people only need the layers and they don't need to do flattening. However, here I am going to show you how to compute the other coordinates that are orthogonal to the cortical depth or cortical layers. Which here, by getting inspired from the computer graphics field, I call them U and V coordinates. And today I am going to talk about the other program that I have implemented, which is called LN2 Multilaterate. Multi stands for multiple and laterate stands for side. So this is basically a word that I have made up to indicate that in this program we are figuring out the sides of the cortex, not the depth. And at the end of this program we will end up having two coordinates, the U coordinate and the V coordinate that are orthogonal to each other. And together they summarize the cortical surface that we have. When I say cortical surface, I do not mean triangular meshes that are conventionally used in MRI data analysis, but I just mean this geometric concept of the cortex being represented as a surface. Now, after this lengthy introduction, let's start with knowing our inputs as usual. First, I have my anatomical image, which is an image around 0.2 mm isotropic resolution. I have just cut out this region to show you quickly what I'm doing with this data. This is a human brain. As an input, all I need is an output that is coming from LN2 layers program, which is called the mid gray matter output. It can be equidist or equivolume. However, I like to use equidistance for computing the cortical surface coordinates. So this input, when we load it, looks as the following. You can see that this input basically summarizes our middle gray matter surface. If I load my segmentation file, you can see that the red line is equally distant from the closest inner and outer surface of the gray matter. And if I click update in ITK snap, I am going to see my middle gray matter voxels. And here I am interested in this anatomical landmark, which is the Heschel's gyrus. As you can see from this angle, this gyrus. As an input to my LN2 multilaterate algorithm, first I need to select a center point. To do it, I use quickly ITK snap. I use the 3D toolbar second option, which is a 3D crosshair mode. And in this mode, if you click on your cortical mesh, it will bring you to that point in the volume. For instance, here I am clicking around. So I would like to center my disk around the center of the Heschel's gyrus. So let's say around this region. Okay, now once I have found my region in this way, I'm going to zoom in in the volume view and I will select label 2 and I will switch to the paint brush mode. I will decrease my brush size to 1 and exactly where my crosshair points in the volume view, I will put just one voxel as label 2. I'm going to save it as control point 0. So now I have a second file that is derived from the middle gray matter file called middle gray matter equidistant, in this case control point 0. Let's move to lane. All these things are explained in the help menu if you would like to read it. Okay, now let's give our inputs. First, the rim file, that is the segmentation file. And then second, the control points file, which is the one we have just created. And thirdly, we can determine the radius of the disk that we are going to flatten. The nice thing about this implementation is that I can determine the size of my disk in millimeters. So this number here that you are seeing, 15, is actually in millimeters. So I will grow a 15 millimeter in radius disk around the point that I have labeled in ITK snap just now. Okay, let's run it. 
So after a few seconds, the operation is done and you can see that we have four new files. Let's have a look at them one by one. First, the parameter file. So you can see that some of the middle parameter voxels remain and some of them turned into green. The use of this file is to use the ITK Snaps Quick Mesh Viewer. So I, if I click on update, now I see the region that I have selected, this disk that is grown at 15 millimeter radius throughout the middle parameter input. Okay, nice. It looks like I have got my Heschel's gyrus and none of the sides are touching to the border of my segmentation. This is good. Now I'm going to have a look at the second output, parameter chunk. Here you can see that the rest of the gray matter is labeled. So this is basically the parameter file, but more precisely extended to the rest of the gray matter. And if I click update, you can see that now I nicely see my cortical chunk. Now let's know our other output, the UV axis. This file again I use the update button in ITK Snap to see what is included. And here you can see that this file shows you the axis that it found. The epicenter of the flat coordinate system denoted with blue. And the first axis in yellow and the second orthogonal axis in cyan. So this output is quite useful to check if the orthogonal coordinates worked correctly. It seems all fine, looks pretty nice. Now I'm going to show you the main output of this algorithm. Okay, I'm going to load it as an additional image. And here you can see that this file contains two volumes. You can see it from the multi-component display in ITK Snap here. If I switch to the second, you can see that the map has changed. Now I'm going to switch back to the first one. And you can see that the values are between minus 15 and 15, which was the radius that we have determined. This output looks pretty good. We will continue in the next video. Thank you.